Sarah, I want to move on to our next question, and which is really another important topic. And uh, me personally, I'm looking forward to learning more about the topic myself. And uh, to our viewers, I want you guys to actually pay extra attention. And if you have anything to add to the conversation, feel free to uh, communicate in a chat uh, section with that with us. So, Sarah, the question goes like this. Women in general have less superannuation savings property than men do. What's the main driver behind this reality, to your opinion? The main reason that women have less of these things is that primarily they've been the ones that have stayed at home to raise their family. So mm. superannuation in Australia is uh, retirement planning. It's... Um, putting money away for your pension for your retirement. So the government introduced mandatory superannuation back in the 1980s. So as an employer, you have to put, um, at the moment, it's 9.5% of your employee's wages is put mm -hmm. away into a superannuation fund. And you can only access that money once you reach retirement, reach retirement age which at the moment in Australia is 67 years old. 67. Um, yeah, and that's actually increasing. So the younger you are now, the older you will be when you retire. So I think it's going to go up to 70. So the, so the younger generation won't be able to retire unless they've got enough of their own savings until they're 70 years old. So what that means is... Um, if you haven't put away money privately to superannuation and you haven't been in the workforce over a period of time because you've been raising money, you're not actually putting anything into a superannuation fund. Now, in I Australia, see. We, also, we also do still have a government pension, but it's not very much money. I think it's just not enough money to, to live on. And I was interested um, earlier this year to read the book Nomad Land, and I read what is the book again? I'm sorry. It's called Nomad Land. Nomad Land. It's an American book, and it was made into a film. That uh, was that that we've just seen here in Australia, and I'm not even sure whether it got the film of the year with um, mm. in the Academy Awards recently. And that was basically a story about homelessness in America and how after the GFC, um, so many people lost their homes and made the choice to walk away from home ownership and live in vans and cars and travel across America living in what they call mobile homes, I suppose. So it's, um, it's something that, I feel really strongly about that we're going to be heading the same way if we don't do some planning for our our women who are reaching retirement age because they haven't been able to put that sort of money away. Then they, they may find themselves later in life in their 50s and 60s being divorced or just not having had the money to, to retire. And if their husbands haven't planned well, they, then they're both in, in a situation. Very well. Thank you. Thank you for that answer, Sarah. And a uh, follow up question to that. Uh, if you were to, if let's assume you're in a position to make a really, really big uh, changes about the matter. And let's assume you have the financial support from the external sources, let's say the government, so on and so forth. What would be your Let's say top two to start with tackling this problem. What solution do you do? You do, can you think of a solution or two that might help the situation? Uh, there, there is some talk about uh, having higher mandatory contributions for women, so that mm. they're able to plan for that and also for the government to contribute to a superannuation fund during the time that women are not working while they're raising families. So 
I, I see that that would be beneficial, but I also see that logistically that's going to be a bit of a problem mm. because we're just constantly putting pressure on our government resources. You know, we can only, the people who work can only pay so much tax. I think one of the big solutions would be to actually get the large companies to pay more tax. Um, it's probably the same in the States where it seems like the the middle income and uh, people are paying the most tax and the big business are paying the least tax, whether they manage to get get their um, financial situations dealt with offshore uh, or whether they just have too many concessions. I'm not really sure. That's a, a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit above my mental grade. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I can only hypo hypothesise that you know you do hear them talking on financial shows about how big business does not pay enough tax, and mm -hmm. you know the the um, the billionaires and the millionaires are the ones that are getting wealthier and wealthier because they manage to escape tax, and I think that we need to get them to contribute more. To the to our taxation system, so that we can provide for the people who are most vulnerable. You are absolutely correct. And uh, one example off the top of my head, I can give you uh, Home Depot. Uh, I'm sure you're, you guys are familiar with Home Depot. They uh, they, they they did about um, 80, 80 80 billion dollar gross sales in 2018 alone. This is 18. And um, they paid zero income tax simply no because the head yes simply because the headquarters are based in a state in America that does not have state income tax. That's one example. So there you go, eighty billion dollar gross sales in twelve months, and you pay zero tax versus an average job working over here i'll give an example in los angeles earning let's say three thousand dollars a month working 80 hours 80 hours a month that's end up with 2300 after getting their taxes so pay 700 dollar tax versus someone 700 dollar tax making three thousand you pay 700 i mean it's crazy. It's a, that's a very good uh, that's a very good uh, partnership uh, for the benefit of the government and yeah. in, in in return we have to talk about homelessness and the inequality with men and women and financial income and opportunities out there and the social stigma that's attached to it that makes everything more sensitive and uh, p gets people more into their feelings and they forget about the uh, more important topics that you, you need to solve the situation instead of you know getting emotional about it and people just try to use the emotion to get out of situations but i think the problem is there and it will be there and uh, since one example, raising children socially, historically, or whether culturally, it's been in a way where mo may, most of the women raised the children in the past, and it came about affecting financially to the women and their income. That right there is a problem that's going to repeat itself. And the fact that the Australian government is looking to put programs in place that's going to help women that are raising children and basically not having the time to uh, compete with an average uh, workforce in a, in a, in a work field. That's a really, really good um, uh, solution to Alec fair balance in place as far as financially goes because life goes on prices go up no one really cares who makes how much money a business person is going to raise their price if the supply price of the item goes up so at the end of the day if we don't help one another out we're not going to get you know we're going to let, let behind